Hi guys, Alec Pierce, Scuba Tech Tips. Here I am at Simcoe Diving in Barrie, Ontario. Fantastic little uh, uh, store. It's a five-star uh, patty facility. Plus, he does hydros. A lot of stores don't do that anymore. Anyway, um, this is an interesting topic, I think, particularly if you technically inclined or mechanically inclined guys. Uh, you'll understand this maybe better than the average diver. And I think this is important because I've heard people say certain divers say certain things and they said it with authority. My instructor's been diving for 40 years and he says if I do this, oh, my tank of air will last two days. <laughs> I'm exaggerating, obviously, but, uh, you know, that is part of the problem. Scuba mis myths. I can't say that, Gavin. Stu scuba mistaken ideas, <laughs> misunderstandings, myths that go on and on and on for years that are incorrect, certainly in today's diving, do seem to last a long, long time. Uh, and it takes time to get rid of them. Let's deal with one. We, we, we dealt with this topic from a different aspect some time ago. Uh, you may recall we talked about uh, divers who are going to be diving in cold water, perhaps ice diving, and they have a herd, maybe from their friends or maybe from their instructor or somebody, that if they lower the intermediate pressure on their regulator, they're less likely to have a freeze up. They're less likely for the reg to freeze up in free flow. <clears throat> and we dealt with that. There's a topic, you can look it up, something probably look up lowering IP or search IP, something like that. And we discussed that very thing, that that is not true. Lowering the IP initially may seem to be a help, helpful, but no, it's not helpful. Well, now there's another misunderstanding, myth, <laughs> that runs around, and I've heard this as well from divers, perhaps more often than, uh, than the other, and that is that if you increase the intermediate pressure, it makes the breathing easier. Well, <clears throat> let's deal with that for just a moment. First of all, let's deal with intermediate pressure. Intermediate pressure is the pressure that the first stage delivers to the second. That is to say you have high pressure in the tank. That's high pressure, which then comes into the first stage of the regulator. The regulator by its design takes that high pressure, say 3,000, and reduces it to the intermediate pressure which, were, which was known as IP. So HP, high pressure, 3,000, is reduced to IP, 150 by the first stage. Roughly 150, it could be anywhere between 120 and 160, but we'll use 150 as a catchphrase, okay? And then that 150 PSI is delivered to the second stage and it sits there waiting for you to take a breath. You suck on the second stage, you pull the diaphragm in, which pulls the seat back, which compresses the spring and the air comes out of that hose and you get air and you take a breath and it's a simple process really. Uh, uh, now the misconception or the problem is that some divers have heard or think that they increase that pressure instead of 150 it's supposed to make it uh, 160 okay 170 I'll increase the pressure intermediate pressure coming from the first to the second it'll make it easier breathing and you know you think that makes sense that does make sense. The intermediate pressure comes to the second stage and you take a breath. If the immediate, intermediate pressure is increased, once you get more air, more easily? The answer is no. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Here we have a, 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 a regulator that's very, very easy to, uh, to adjust. So, and that's why I chose this particular model. The first stage, <clears throat> the intermediate pressure, the IP if you like, is increased or decreased with this large Allen key on top. In you decrease it, make it lower by turning it counterclockwise. If you want to increase the intermediate pressure, then you turn it clockwise. And that's what we're going to do. This is the second stage. And this regulator was set up properly based on factory uh, uh, recommendations, factory standards, so that its breathing effort was exactly right. The intermediate pressure was as it's supposed to be, 140 PSI. Let's see what happens if you increase the intermediate pressure in an attempt to make it breathe easier. Let's go. We're going to start increasing it like so. All we're really doing by doing this is increasing the pressure on the spring underneath this adjustment nut, and that spring pushes on the diaphragm, pushes the diaphragm down, and that pushes the needle down, which pushes the seat down and lets more air in. Let's see what happens. Ah, starting to free flow. Well, that's certain <laughs> makes it easier breathing. Sure, a free flow means it's <laughs> free-flowing all the time. You can't get any easier than that. Of course, you're also losing and wasting an awful lot of air. Too much. So, see how sensitive it is? Just giving it a shake so that 
that that uh, that uh, little lever in there with that long light piece of metal moose now you got it losing a lot of air okay so that is not good so what do you do you've increased the intermediate pressure and if you had a gauge on it we do have a gauge here we have a gauge on it we'd see it's now too high based on factory standard well now what you have to do <coughs> is adjust the second stage so you take another allen key and you take the cap out of the end and then you take another tool and you reach down inside there you find the nut down in there and you adjust that until the engine until the free flowing stops there we are okay so we're adjusting now so we've increased the intermediate pressure and we readjusted the second stage so that that intermediate pressure does not push the seat out of the way and and uh, and uh, cause free flowing. Is it easier to breathe? Well, here's the difficulty, and there are several. Number one, not necessarily, because <clears throat> when you increase the intermediate pressure, the second stage started the free flow. That meant that the second stage. The spring on the second stage that is counterbalancing the intermediate pressure is now squeezed more. If the spring is squeezed more, and picture this like a car spring or any coil spring, if the spring is squeezed more by that higher intermediate pressure, that means there's more force on the spring. It's being squeezed more. The, the, the spring is being held there with more force, which means <clears throat> that when you suck in and the diaphragm comes down and the lever tries to pull that spring open, the lever has to push harder. That's right. You increase the intermediate pressure, so you put more force on the spring in the second seat, st second stage. So now the lever in the second stage has to work harder to get it to open or let air out. It's exactly the opposite of what you wanted. Now, add to that, remembering that modern regulators are very sophisticated. Every, every part, every spring, every lever, every O-ring, every backup ring, everything in there is all balanced by the engineers. So it works perfectly at a certain pressure. It does not work perfectly. It works, but it does not work perfectly at lower pressures. It does not work perfectly at higher pressure. It works, but it does not work perfectly at a specific pressure. The factory recommended design engineered specific intermediate pressure is the pressure at which all these various components work perfectly and smoothly. Increasing intermediate pressure logically if you think about it should make the breathing easier but now you've seen a demonstration it does not unless you want a free-flowing regulator. <laughs> Increase intermediate you get a free flow so increase the spring pressure to stop the free flow and now it's harder to breathe. That make any sense? I hope there's a little bit of common sense in there, as well as trying to accommodate the divers who are just mistaken, maybe in their ideas. There's a, a, a myth and something for you to think about. Hope that was useful to you guys. Alec Pierce uh, from uh, Scuba Tech Tips here at Simcoe Diving in Barrie, Ontario, and we'll have some more tech tips for you, more things for you to think about shortly. Take care.